our God is a miracle working God. And I believe that God's goodness leads people to repentance. And today as you've tuned in, I believe it's not an accident. I believe God wants to bring you to repentance by His mercy, by His goodness. God is a loving God. He's a loving Father. And today I would like to preach about the love of the Father. And uh, in the last two parts, we've heard about the prodigal son and how the father was expecting his son to come home, how he, the father received him with open arms, how the father smothered this, this, um, this uh, r- runaway boy with kisses, how he forgave him, and how they threw a party. I believe today God wants to deepen and to show to you how much he really loves you. Maybe some of you have turned your backs on God. You are running away from God's presence. You are trying to escape the kingdom of God. You are running away from God. And God is pursuing you. God is waiting you. And He is calling you back today. Now this son, he ran away because he was driven by a give me mentality. He was driven by a right now mentality. And he was driven by a just for fun mentality. And driven by these, these wrong ways of thinking, driven by demonic forces, he was looking for fulfillment and for pleasure in worldly activities. And he squandered the father's wealth in wild living. And after a time, after his friends had left him, after his, his life was going down the tube, after he had hit the bottom, he finally remembered the good days he had with his father. He remembered his loving father and he made a decision to return to his father's home. He went, he got up, he went home. And as he was uh, 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 coming closer to the house, he was rehearsing his apology. And as you remember maybe from last time, as he came to the father, as he started speaking his apology, his father interrupted him. And his father invited him to come and have a party. I want us to finish the story today. Luke chapter 15 from verse 22. Let's read Luke chapter 15 from verse 22. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best rope and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Verse 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, to you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, You are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because... Your brother, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Hallelujah. When the son reached, almost reached home, the father came, ran towards him. He embraced him and kissed him. And while they were still outside of the compound, outside of the city, the father told his servants, quick, bring the best rope. Now, I was wondering, why was the father sending the servants to go back, bring the rope out? Why couldn't the son go in and just, you know, uh, change his dress? I believe the father was protecting his son. The father was covering the shame of his son. The father didn't want anybody to see the shame of his son. The son looked filthy. He was clothed in, in rags. But the father said, bring the best rope. So before the son even entered the house, he was dressed in nice robes. He now looked very dignified. He had very nice clothes on. So whenever, when, as, as he came back home, everybody around him would not even notice that this son, this runaway son, had been a beggar, had been dirty and filthy, and had been with a swine. The father was protecting him. That is the love of God. 
No matter what you've done in your past, no matter what your sins are, God will forgive you and He will cover your sins. God does not want you to be, be, be full of shame. Yes, of course, you have done some shameful things, but God will forgive and God will cover. And He will tell His angels, bring the best robe there is in heaven. And the best robe you can put on today is the robe of the righteousness of God. And Jesus Christ has become your righteousness. And as you receive Him today, He will clothe you in His righteousness. And whenever God looks at you, He will not see your filth. He will not see your, your sins and your dirt. He will not see your past. He will see Christ because you will be clothed in Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Your righteousness, my own righteousness, is as filthy rags. We never measure up to God's standards. But God says, I will clothe you with my son Jesus Christ and you will be declared righteous. He gave him the rope. He also said, bring the ring. He was demanding for a ring. It was a special ring. It was the sealing ring the father would use to seal contracts. In those days, when you had some valuable things, maybe some, some, some jewelry or some important contracts, they would bring a clay jar, and they would put the valuable things inside the jar. They would put a lid on top, and then they would use fresh and soft clay and seal the lid. And as after sealing the lid, they would use the sealing ring to, uh, to, to, to press the ring into the soft clay. And only the person in possession of that ring had the right to open that jar. It means this thing, this ring, could bring you back into position. This ring could bring you back into wealth and prosperity. This son who ran away could now again sign contracts. He too could treasure things. What this means is the father was reinstalling the son. The son squandered the wealth of the father. The son squandered the inheritance. But the father said, here, I'm giving it back to you. You can have it back. Listen today, no matter how you have squandered the wealth God has given you, no matter how many sinful activities you've been through, no matter how you wasted your life, your time, your resources, your health, God will restore it to you today as you return. He will hand the ring back and you will become a co-heir with Christ, as the Bible says. Listen, I am born again. I am part of the family of God. And the Bible declares that I am a co-heir with Christ. That means whatever Christ possesses, I also share with him. I am a co-heir with Christ because I'm a part of the family. You can become a co-heir today. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You may have messed up. You have deserved Eternal condemnation, separation from God, from God, hell. But God says, by His grace, the gift of God is eternal life. God is handing back over the ring to you. And He says, you can share in my inheritance once again. Today, as you return to the Father, you'll experience the goodness of God, the love of God. He is waiting for you with open arms. Then the Father said, after you've brought the rope and have brought the ring, make sure to also bring the sandals. Bring the sandals. Now the sandals are very important. In those days, sandals were not for everybody. Shoes were not for everybody. In those days, if you were a slave, you could not wear sandals. You would be barefooted. But a son would wear sandals. So what the Father is doing here is very important. Remember, as the son was coming home, he was rehearsing and he, he was about to tell his father, make me one of your hired men, make me one of your slaves, make me one of your servants. That was his intention. He knew he had messed up. He was ready to become a servant, a slave of his father. But the father said, you are not going to be a slave. I am reinstalling you into the position, into the legal and rightful position of being my son. Hallelujah. He says, bring the sandals. He is still my son. Yes, he has been away. Yes, he has messed up. Yes, he has lived a sinful life. But he is still my son. He is still connected to my family. No matter what you have done with your life, no matter what happened in your past, God still loves you and he is calling you back. Repent. His goodness will lead you to repentance. So he, he embraced the son. He put on righteousness. He gave him back the inheritance. And he reinstalled him completely, 100% as a son. Hallelujah. 
When God brings you back today into the kingdom of God, He will clothe you with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He will make you a co-heir with Christ Jesus. And you'll become one of, become one of His children. You'll become one of His uh, uh, treasured, loved children. You'll become a member of the family of God. Hallelujah. Now, He did not expect this great um, uh, mercy of His Father. He expected judgment. Listen, in those days, if a son would behave like this son did, if a son would be rebellious, a drunkard, somebody running after prostitutes, the parents had the obligation in those days to take their son into the, the gate and the elders would speak judgment over him and then the parents and all the people involved would have to stone that son. It was very common. It was the law in those days. If a son was stubborn, he was stoned. Now, but this son knew something about his father. He knew my father, he knew my father would never, ever pick up a stone to stone me, to kill me. Although I deserve it. Although I have sinned, but my father is a loving father. Listen, no matter how severe your problem is, no matter how terrible your sins are, God will not throw the first stone. God will embrace you. God will forgive you. He will declare you righteous, and he will put you in the position of his Family, you become one of his sons, one of his children. And then he says, go and kill the fattened calf. The fattened calf was reserved for special guests of honor. There was a special calf reserved for a very unique moment when somebody comes who is a very special guest. To honor him, they'll kill the fattened calf. Now here comes this prodigal son who had squandered the father's wealth and the father treats him like a guest of honor. The Father treats him as somebody who is very special. Listen, God sees the potential in you. People may judge you from the outside, but God knows who you are. And God knows the value, your value. And He says, I love you. I see something very special in you. I know you'll be a, you are a unique person and you'll be somebody very special. And He treats you prophetically. He treats you in a way He sees you in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Today as you come home, as you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, as you return to your Father's house, He will treat you in a very unique way. He will embrace you. He will forgive you. He will make your son, a daughter, a part of his family. And He will kill the fattened calf. He will treat you like a guest of honor. That is the love of the Father. And then they started dancing and they were celebrating. They were throwing a party. If you repent today, if you return today, there will be a party in heaven. There is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. And they had, they had joy at the Father's house. They were rejoicing. They were dancing. There was music. Listen, church was never supposed to be boring. There's excitement in the kingdom of God. There is joy. There are shouts in the kingdom of God. In the house of God, there are times where you should celebrate. I would encourage everyone listening right now, if you're looking for a church, look for a church that knows how to celebrate, how to celebrate a father, how to celebrate a lost person coming home. They celebrate it. They rejoice. That's the character of God. Our God is a God of joy, a God of love. Hallelujah. And as you come today, He will rejoice over you. Heaven will throw a party. And I believe your friends, if they are Christians already, they will also throw a party with you, knowing that you have returned, you have joined the kingdom of God. Now, this was a wonderful story and, I, a story, and I wish this story would have finished and stopped with this happy end here. But it does not. Because the Bible says there was a second son, the older brother of this, this young man. And as he came back, he heard the sound of music. And the Bible says he became very angry and he refused to go in. He heard the music. He asked the servant, what is going on? The servant explains to him, your, your brother has come home, and now the father has killed the fattened calf. They are rejoicing. They are celebrating. They are dancing because your brother is home. And now this, you know, this, this, this religious anger arises inside of him. And he refuses to go in and to celebrate with the people who, who are celebrating a sinner who came home. Because he believes he is more righteous. Because he believes he deserves, he deserves more than his brother does. And I believe today in many churches we have lost the perspective. In many churches we are so focused on our churchy programs. Forgetting about the sinners outside. And what if a sinner gets saved? Do we celebrate? 
What if somebody who has, who has just finished, just finished with addiction, just finished with fornication and adultery and lying and cheating, and he comes and he joins the church, and he deserves the same rights as you do, and you have been praying and fasting for many years. What if God started, starts using this young person in your church and is not using you? Maybe there's religious anger in your heart, and it's wrong. This anger is rooted in arrogance. This anger is rooted in a wrong mentality because you are trying to deserve God's, God's mercy. You are trying to work for God's grace, but God's grace cannot be deserved. God's grace cannot be worked for. God's grace only can only be received. And the younger son received that grace by faith. Hallelujah. This young, this older brother, he was religious, but he, but he was lost. He believed that he had to work hard to deserve salvation, to deserve being part of the family, not realizing he had been a part of the family all these years. For us to understand what is going on in this parable, I want us to go back to Luke chapter 15, the first two verses, and then it will all make sense. Now, the parables in, in Luke chapter 15, they are introduced by these two verses. The Bible says, 15 verse 1, Luke 15 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him, to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. That was the context. And then Jesus started telling all these stories about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and also about the prodigal son. You know why? Because he was trying to make a point with them. He says, you are, you are like the uh, older son. You are the religious people, but you are lost. He was telling them, you, you, you do not want me to eat with the sinners, but you are the ones who think you are spiritual, but you are not allowing other people, unbelievers, sinners, to enter the kingdom of God. This older brother believed that salvation must be deserved, must be worked for. And he speaks to his father. By the way, it's very funny. The father is willing to come and even call this son. He loves both. He loves the, the younger son who messed up, who went completely the wrong way. And he loves the self-righteous son who also messed up, who never understood the love of God, but who was right there with the father. And he goes out to meet him. The father goes out and he, he asks him, he begs him to come in and to rejoice with him. But he starts confronting the father and he tells his father, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Can you hear the, 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 this, the self-righteousness? Can you hear the religious spirit speaking here? He says, all these years I've been slaving. He never understood that his father was a father. He never understood that he was born into the family and he, had not, he didn't have to work hard to be part of the family. He never understood grace. He was part of of the family. And he thought he had to slave and work hard to please his father. And many of you watching right now who are influenced by religious spirits, you still believe you have to work hard to please God. Stop believing that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Just believe in the grace and the mercy and the goodness of God. And by faith receive and you will be forgiven. No, it is wrong. It is wrong to sin. Yes, it is. It is wrong to go the wrong direction. It is wrong. But as you repent, as you turn back, God the Father is waiting for you. He'll forgive you. Do not try to earn your way into heaven. It won't work. You'll never be good enough. But as you receive grace, God will forgive you. The Bible is very clear. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. You have been saved by grace. It is God's gift. Verse 9. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verse 8. He came, he was very self-righteous. He said, I have never disobeyed any of your orders. Now, do you believe a man who was maybe 20, 25 years old has never disobeyed his father's orders? I don't think so. I believe in many times he disobeyed his father's orders. But he was blinded. He was so self-righteous. He was so arrogant. He was not open to receive grace. He was ungrateful. He said to his father, you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. He was accusing his father. He couldn't see the goodness of God, not realizing everything around him. 
the possession the father possessed was his. See, he, he was very close to the father every day, day in and day out. He was walking with the father. He was talking to the father, but he never knew the heart of the father. The younger son, however, he ran away from his father, but he knew the heart of his father. He knew even though he messed up, even though he was wrong, he knew he could come home and the father would receive him. The father would never stone him. Some people who are in church do not know God. There are people who are in church today who will go straight to hell because they never understood grace, never understood God. They think they can work their way up to heaven. They think their good works will influence and impress God. Stop thinking that. That attitude will lead you straight into hell. Today, you have to receive the grace of God. He is merciful. He is full of mercy. He is full of grace. He is a loving Father. Repent of your sins. Receive forgiveness. He was ungrateful, the, the older brother. And he was pointing at his younger brother. That's something religious people always like to do. Whenever they see a sinner coming, they always like to make this impression and like to, to show off and to, to tell them, to, to make this pe person to know, listen, we are something better. You know, we have been church members of this church for 25 years. You can be a church member for 50 years and still not know God. But if there's a child that experiences the grace of God and it comes to church, that child knows more about God than you do if you've been 25 years to church member. Grace cannot be deserved. Grace cannot be earned even by definition. Grace needs to be received by faith. And this younger brother, he understood grace. He knew the Father's love and he received that grace. Today I believe you'll receive that grace for free. Now, as he spoke to the father, this older, older, older brother, he said, listen, this son of yours, he squandered your wealth. He did not even call him his brother. He said, this son of yours. He was referring to him as the son of the father, not making sure he was not related to him. But the father called him my son. The father treated him like a guest of honor. The father loved the sinful son. But this self-righteous brother would not even call him a brother. And listen, if this were a matter of heaven and hell, I am very sure the younger brother would get, get to heaven and the older brother would go straight to hell, not knowing the grace and mercy of God. But before I close, I want to point out something here. Now, the Bible says that the father told the servants to go and kill the fattened calf. In the Greek language, the word used here for fattened calf is...